Hello everyone, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can run your whole Blazor application as a Razor Pages project. This is one of my favorite combinations because you might be working on a legacy project, which is a Razor Pages project, but you want to learn Blazor and use Razor components in your Razor project, you can do that by using this technique. And also, Razor Pages are pretty easy to get started with. So if you have new developers joining your team, they don't need to learn Blazor in order to complete tasks. They can get started with Razor Pages pretty easily and complete the task if they need to. So let's convert our Blazing Chat. This is the application that we have been working on. This is a Blazor server application. So if I open developer tools, you'll see that there's a WebSocket open and it's making the connection to the server so that we can perform UI operations. And this is a full package application where we're using JSON Web Token for authentication and authorization. So we want to make sure that this whole application is working fine in Razor Pages too. I'm gonna go to my Visual Studio and create a new Razor Pages. I'm gonna first stop the services which are running. And let's take a look at the project structure first. We have this components project. That's where we have all our Razor components. And we have this shared project. This is where we have our view models and models that we need for our application. And then we have WebAssembly project that what you know Blazing Chat used to be. We don't really have a whole lot of code running here. And we also have Blazor server application. We don't have a whole lot of code running here. Most of the code is written in components and shared project. And we have referred these projects and server project to run our application. And same thing we are going to do with our Razor Pages application too. Let's go ahead and create a new Razor Pages application. I'm going to go to my terminal here and create a new web app, which is a Razor Pages application. I'm going to name it as Blazing Chat dot Razor Razor Pages. That will create a project in my folder here. And let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks like. I'm going to say dot net run. I'm going to go to the project folder first and then do dot net run. That will run my application on this board. I'm going to grab this board and go to my browser. And this is a pretty easy application to get started with. There are only two pages. There is home and privacy. And these pages are CSS HTML and then there is page model for them. So let's take a look at the code here. If I go to my Razor pages, you can see that there is index.cshtml, which is HTML, and then there is page model which is in here and uh, this is page model which gets bound to your page that's how you do data binding and then we have on get event which helps you get the data when page wants to get loaded and uh, there's on post event which gets called when you're submitting the data so it's pretty easy to get started with these pages and we would like to run our razor components here too so to run razor components our Razor components, first we'll need to add references of our components project and shared project and Razor Pages project. So whatever I have done for my Blazor server project, same thing I'm going to do for my Razor Pages project too. So first I'm going to add these references for my components and shared in my Razor Pages project. I'm gonna go to my project file for Razor Pages and add those references so that we can use these components and shared library in our Razor Pages project. Now I'm gonna go to my program.cs file of my Razor Pages project, and we need to enable our Razor Pages project to run as a Blazor application. So for that, I'm gonna open my program.cs file here, and then, we need to add some lines here from Blazor Server Project to enable this application as Blazor Server Project. For that, I'm going to open the program.cs of my server project and go to this line, which is builder.services.add server side Blazor. 
which will add the services that I need to run my application as Blazor server side. And then we are going to need to add these two lines too, so that we have the SignalR connection and it knows where to fall back to. So we'll add this host CSS schema later on in this video. I'm going to add these two lines in my Blazor pages too. Once I've done that, we need to also add the services that we need for our Blazing chat application to run in Razor Pages 2. So first, I'm going to grab the namespaces that I need to add the services. I'm going to grab these namespaces and then go to top of the page here and add these namespaces. And then we added this region to configure our services for Blazing chat. So I'm going to grab these lines from our Blazor server application and add them in our Razor Pages too. Now our Razor Pages application is ready to run as Blazor and also it has the services that we need for Blazing Chat. We also need this application settings that we have for Blazor server application. So if you go to the app setting file of our Blazor server application, this is where we configured the base address where to get the data from and the UI framework so that our component knows where these components are running. So I'm going to grab these settings too so that our application is not crashing. I'm going to grab them and put them in my Razor Pages project too. And same thing I'm going to do with my development app setting too. And put them in Razor Pages here. Now our app settings is updated. We need to also update our layout.cshtml so that we know what all CSS references are there for this application. I'm going to actually replace this with the layout.cshtml that I have for Blazor server application. So let's delete this and then we will get the layout.cshtml from our Blazor server application. So in our Blazor server application, we have this host.cshtml, which is running our component from app, which is actually coming from Blazing Chat components. And we have this layout.cshtml that is referring to all the CSS and JavaScript that we have for Blazing Chat. One of the important lines is this line so that um, you know, we can make that signal connection. If you're not replacing the layout.cshtml like I'm doing, make sure that you're adding this line so that you can run your Razor components. Now let's go ahead and copy these host.cshtml and layout.cshtml from our Blazor server project and put it in our Razor project, Razor pages project. Here I'm gonna have to change one thing in my layout.cshtml that would be this assembly name for CSS isolation. So I'm going to change this to Razor Pages so that my CSS isolation works fine. And another thing that I'm going to change is in index.cshtml. Here it represents index.cshtml as the root path, but we already have root path for Blazing Chat. So I'm going to change this to index so that you know we are not conflicting with our routes. So that's all you need to do in order to get your Razor pages ready for running Blazor application. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is to tell my web API that it's fine if this Razor pages application can connect to it and get the data. For that, I'm going to go to my launch setting and get this application URL and then go to my web API. And in program.cs, I'm going to tell my web API that it's fine if this URL tries to connect to you. Now let's go ahead and run our application and see if it's working fine or not. With that, I'm going to open my terminal. And first, I'm going to run my web API. And then I'm going to run my Razor Pages application. I'm going to grab this URL and go to that URL. And now you can see that the whole application is running as a Blazor server application. If I open developer tools, you'll see that it's making that WebSocket connection. 
and also in local storage when i try to log in it will generate that json web token for our application and if you want to go to index page which was cshtml page you'll be able to go to that page even to the privacy page you'll see that privacy page too so if there are developers who want to still use you know razor pages functionality they can perform these functionalities too so this is how you can run your whole application into razor pages project before i end the video i would like to ask a question in which dotnet framework razor pages was introduced let me know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching the video if you have any questions you can ask them in the comment section below or you can reach out to me on my twitter or facebook handle thanks again i'll see you in the next one Bye.